Our second speaker for today is Amelia, who is a PhD student here in the School of Physics, currently researching the largest structures of the universe and the galaxies within them. Her research has taken her on several trips to the Anglo-Australian Telescope in New South Wales, where the midnight lunches are apparently amazing. That's right, the telescope, you have to work through the night and then sleep during the daytime and you've got a hope for some good weather as well. If you're lucky, you can spot galaxies during the day and emus during the night. Amelia is also a champion netballer and a keen traveller. She's covered most of South America, North America and Asia, the most student salary friendly places to travel. Today, Amelia is going to tell us about the summer project that she completed between the fourth and fifth years of her science engineering degree, which had significantly more impact in the science world than she had initially first imagined. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Kay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here to talk today, like Kay said, about some of my research I did as a summer student a few years ago. Um, so what I'll be talking about is basically the largest structures of the universe um, and filaments of galaxies are one of these things. So I thought to start off with, what I might do is just to give you an idea of the scale of these things that we're going to be talking about today. So here we are on planet Earth, and I guess you could already say we're, it's a very big place. Let's shrink the Earth down even further. Keep going. Okay, and here is our sun. Now our sun is so large that it would fit 100 million Earths inside it, right? Um, but, you know, the sun is only a small part of our solar system, so let's shrink our sun down to its position in the solar system. And our solar system is so large, it's about 1.5 by 10 to the 10 kilometres. Um, I mean, this distance is just so big, we can't even really imagine it with our brains, but I'll try. So as an example, um, the furthest man-made uh, object from Earth at the moment is the Voyager 1 spacecraft. Now, this thing was launched in 1970s, and it's only recently left our solar system. So it's taken 35 years, travelling at 17 kilometres per second, and it's only just left our solar system. Um, so our sun is one of many... Uh, stars in our galaxy. In fact, there's a hundred billion other stars in our galaxy. So let's zoom out and have a look at our galaxy, or one that looks a lot like ours. So we are located on one of the spiral arms of our Milky Way galaxy, which is a hundred thousand light years across. Uh, so what that means is it would take light a hundred thousand years to go from side to side of our galaxy. Um, like I said, there's a hundred billion other stars in our galaxy. And if we were to send our Voyager 1 probe towards the centre of the universe, at this current speed, it would take it 450,000 years to reach there. Or if we accelerated it to the speed of light, which is somewhat unphysical, it would still take 26,000 years. That is how big our galaxy is. So we're not even talking about galaxies today. We're actually going to zoom out even further and look at how galaxies arrange themselves in the universe. Uh, it's not an even distribution. Galaxies clump together in a gravitational form into what we call the cosmic web. So let's shrink our galaxy again. Okay, and here is an image of what we call the cosmic web. So we can imagine the way that galaxies arrange themselves in the universe uh, as almost like a sponge-like uh, distribution. So you've got holy regions where there's not much happening and then you've got the clumpy regions which are the parts of the sponge, I guess. So we can characterise the larger scale structure of our universe into about three, um, three different types of objects. We've got clusters of galaxies, voids and filaments of galaxies. Uh, so this, I should say, is a sort of almost like a density map of our universe. So the yellow things are actually very bright and very dense and the dark purple things are very under dense and there's very little in them. So a cluster of galaxies is basically exactly what it says. It's a cluster of galaxies. They're all together. They're all a whole bunch of galaxies together in a very hot, dense, dynamically um, active region. Um, in contrast, we have voids of galaxies, which are sort of like the holes of the sponge of our cosmic web. There's very little, um, very little galaxies or anything in these voids. So linking clusters of galaxies to each other are filaments of galaxies, which is what I've been studying. So filaments of galaxies are these long, tenuous uh, tendrils, I guess you could say, of galaxies, dust and gas. And they link clusters of galaxies to each other. So I've put a, I don't know if I can see my, 
I've put uh, something like this, so it's following like this. So the cool thing about filaments is they act like the highways of the universe. So we think that galaxies fall from voids and are gravitationally attracted onto filaments. And filaments funnel these galaxies along them and onto the clusters, which is where they end up. The other cool thing about filaments of galaxies is that they're the most, by mass, they take up the largest percentage of the universe. So we think that 40% of the mass of the universe is enclosed within filaments of galaxies, which is more than any other structure, as you can see up there. Um, so filaments are definitely the topic of my research. Um, so I want to introduce you now to the missing visible mass problem. So if we were to take all of the visible mass of the universe, all of the stars, galaxies, planets, dust, gas, atoms, all the humans, this desk, if we were to add everything up and weigh it, what we would find is that if we compare it to simulations and observations of the way the universe looks to us today, we'd find that we're actually missing a large fraction of this visible mass. Um, so we feel like we, we find that we actually need more visible mass um, than what we see to make our simulations and our observations agree. So this is what's known as the missing mass problem, and this is what I was looking into. Um, so where is this mass? It's theorised by astronomers that a lot of this mass is actually in the form of electrons, hot electrons in a plasma called the warm hot intergalactic medium or the WIM and this gas sits between galaxies uh, both in clusters and in filaments of galaxies. So this is an optical image of a cluster of galaxies and then this purple gas is an artist's representation of what we think um, this warm hot intergalactic medium would look like in a cluster. Um, okay, so if we think that this mass is locked up in this WIM gas, why don't, uh, it's also it's very hot is the other thing too, so it's 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 7 degrees, which is very hot. This would emit in the X-ray regime. So why don't we just aim our X-ray telescopes at a filament of galaxies and detect it, problem solved. I don't need a summer project. Um, unfortunately, it's not that easy. This gas is very, very sparse and under dense, so there's very little of it. And unfortunately, it's actually below the detection thresholds of our current generation of X-ray telescopes. Um, so there's no luck there. But astronomers have a little trick that they can use. It's called the stacking of signal. So what we can do and we, is we can grab a whole bunch of what looks like noisy data. And this is real data here. And if we stack it all together, we'll find that there's actually a signal hiding in the noise. So if we were to stack these four images of just what looks like noisy data on top of each other, what we would find is that the noise actually cancelled out and we end up with a very strong signal. So this is commonly used by astronomers. Um, so easy, right? We'll just grab a whole bunch of images in the X-ray of all our filaments and we'll stack them on top of each other and we'll get a signal. Problem solved. Unfortunately, again, it's not that easy. Um, if we go back to our picture of the cosmic web, we zoom in a little bit. Um, so if I just highlight a few of the filaments in this picture, just in red, what you might notice is that they're not all straight. In fact, a large percentage of them are actually curved. So for example, if I was to look for filamentary emission between these two clusters of galaxies here, if I was to look right in the middle between the two clusters, I would actually not see any gas because the filament that connects the two is curved. So if I was just to grab all the filaments I could find and stack them on top of each other, I would not necessarily get a detection um, in this X-ray regime because a lot of them are so curvy, right? <laughs> so yeah, another problem, first world problem, say. <laughs> but all is not lost, we have another solution. What we can do is use a, a known catalogue of filaments. So this guy, Porter et al, he sat there and he looked through a whole bunch of filaments and what, you can, what, uh, uh, what I've shown here is a few of his plots of filaments of galaxies. So these red dots are galaxies that belong to the host clusters. And the black dots are the filamentary galaxies connecting the two clusters. So he sat through he, a whole bunch of these filaments and he classified them according to shape, the straight, curvy, bendy, all that sort of thing. And so you can see some of them are very curved, like this one, but some of them are very nice and straight. So what I can do, and what we did do, was grab all of the straight filaments, rotate them all so that they sat in the same plane, and stack them all together and try and get out uh, some emission. Uh, so we did just that. 
Um, before I do that though, this is an example of an X-ray image of the targets that we are looking at. Those two blue circles are where there should be clusters of galaxies. In fact, we know there is clusters of galaxies in these two blue circles because we are looking at optical images of them. And that little blue box is where we're looking for filamentary emission between the two clusters of galaxies. So I don't know if your eyesight's better than mine, but I can't see anything in this image, which is why we need to stack them. So that's what we did. We put a whole bunch of filaments on top of each other. And what we found was a detection above the noise um, once we'd stacked them all together. So from that, we derived an electron density. So if we have uh, a density for all of these electrons between all of these clusters, and we wildly extrapolate for the rest of the universe. <laughs> what we did find was if we added up all these electrons from all of this WIM gas, which is in these filaments, we found that they actually balanced the mass deficit that we had found in our initial mass problem. And that's how we found the missing mass of the universe. <laughs> uh, that's it. Thanks, guys.